Welcome back to Lights of Lumine, session eight, I think we're on now. Um, last session, our intrepid, um, don't even really want to call them heroes yet. I don't think you've earned the title of heroes yet, but you're starting to look pretty heroic. Um, you began in combat with some boggards. You found them squatting in a... a Corrupted is a strong word, but a, a swamp that shouldn't have been there, an area of swamp that had expanded and disrupted the road from uh, Lumen Village to Sea Spray. Um, you asked them kindly to leave, implored them beforehand, um, but that didn't go well. And so we began uh, in combat with said boggards. Um, it went back and forth. Things were looking pretty good for you guys. Um, some ridiculous shots from uh, Gwilin, which seems to be her thing. Um, but uh, the the Boggard Swamp Seer, the one with the, the the earthworm staff, did go out with a bit of a bang, land, um, unleashing a destructive croak that downed some of you and our beloved... Uh, Celia slipped very close to death itself, giving the DM a heart attack, um, but survived. Everyone's everyone survived. Everyone's okay. Um, absolutely, I can restart the music. Uh, hop and hop. Um, Scrick figured out the the fountain, the strange stone uh, fountain, using the the boggard staff to turn some kind of mechanism which drained the swamp and you could see all the um all the swamp life and um flora beginning to kind of dry up and dry out and you you think you have fixed um this swampy terrain um with a few little uh, trophies gathered by scrick as well you headed back on your way oh and um, forgive me for not mentioning immediately. We poor Dandy was blown apart um, in the the boggard spellcaster's destructive croak, but has since been replanted and will return to us um, soon. Scrick also implored Gwilin and um, Celia to um, make a little pact to get tattoos at the earliest convenience. Um, Representing a dagger for Scrick, a bow for Gwilin, and uh, a shield for um, Celia, which is pretty cool. Um, you then headed um, back on the road, resting up, um, and into the next day, um, you heard the sound of a bear, um, an angry bear over a nearby hill, and decided to investigate. Um, some of you more reluctantly than others where you found a house being attacked, being worried by a bear, and the sound of someone knocking on the door and calling out for help um, on the inside. You made a great plan, followed it through with Scrick sneaking around and climbing up on top of the house um, to dive down um, with a, a tranquilizer given to him by his father, usually used for horses, um, ready to plant it in the backside of this bear. Unfortunately, the plan... At the last moment didn't pay off as Scrick bounced away and we were thrown into a, a dangerous combat situation with use of the tranquilizer and um, some very nice uh, positioning and use of the terrain. Celia holding the line against the, the dangerous bear while the rest of you got to kind of back line, willing with some more ridiculous critical strikes with her, her bow. Um, no one was was harmed, and you managed to bring down um, the bear. Um, oh, also worth mentioning, in case he'd forgotten, Scrick also made a deal with the Scrit, the gremlin, currently in his bottle, uh, called Soggy Bit, um, to provide him with books so that um, Scrick doesn't have to read them himself. But we find ourselves now uh, outside this house that was attacked by the bear. The evidence of the bear's attack, clear to see for all, deep gouges in the wood, and claw marks and and um, biting, bite marks from the bear as well. Um, but as you cleared it out and Scrick pocketed a cabbage, um, uh, a small family of Shuni, um, diminutive um, dog-like uh, humanoids who are fairly common um, in Hespia, um, emerged 
um, from the house thanking you for your aid and saying that you can take as many cabbages um, as you would like. So we now find ourselves standing with um, this individual. You are all where you are. Oh, a note for um, for Hannah. I got the token for protect a tree. It's over here. Hopefully, it's it's a good one. But if you want me to change it, I can. But yeah, we find ourselves now here with this individual having proclaimed that you can take as many cabbages as you like, and it's kind of gesturing to all of you from underneath his shaggy uh, locks. Got this kind of long-furred sheepdog look to him. Um, probably comes up to you. Kind of comes up to you a little bit lower than your chest, Celia. Junior are often quite um, small folk. Um, and he proclaims, he just says, Oh, thank you all so much. Uh, my family thanks you, I thank you. If it wasn't for you all, I, I don't know, we'd be inside that bear, maybe. As he looks out at all of you. Does anybody say anything? Yeah, no, no one wants to talk to the nice, the nice shuni man. I'm trying to eat my dinner. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm uh, lagging so bad. I can't press any. But oh god. <laughs> Scrape would just close some things. Yeah, no problem. Scrape would I say no problem. Type... Yeah. I did type in the chat, but it's not. I'm lagging really bad. No worries. Silly would say that's okay. Yeah, he would. He would kind of. Um, he doesn't um, come forward to shake your hand or anything, but there's there's a, a posture of kind of deference and gratitude. He kind of bows. Um, he introduces himself as, my name is Tychus, uh, this is little TJ, as he like pats the biggest of the three kids, they look like they are kids on the head, this is Morpy and this is Triella, um, you're all very welcome to come inside, we don't have much, but um, you're very welcome to it. Please, as he sees Scrick stood there and <laughs> saw you taking a cabbage before. Please take whatever produce you like. Um, you've saved us from that that poor creature. As he looks kind of sad, brushes some of the, the fur out of his eyes and looks at the bear slumped over here. That's right. As long as we can be of help. Uh, very, very helpful. Thank you. Uh, I don't know what got into it. Uh, we're usually a, a peaceful family, but it just kept attacking and clawing. I tried throwing bits of food out the windows, and nothing seemed what to work. What were their na- What were their names again, Tom? I'm just lagging so fucking bad. This laptop's right. like. Eh. I'll keep it easy in the in the chat. It's Tychus, is the father, and there's TJ, Morpy, and. Triella, the kids. Yeah, you can see there. Um, they're looking around, sniffing the air. They begin to sort of wander. Take it all in. and Triella daughters. Or... Um, it's uh difficult to see any kind of outward displays of of gender identity. Um. Okay. But um, they look quite young, um, the equivalent of kind of like ranging between mid-teens and sort of early teens or coming up to teens. Um, yeah, this group would be like, well, we kind of finished what we were going to do here, so I guess we'll see you later. What? Uh, like a, a flash in the pan, that's... um. Not sure what time of day is it? It's well, still pretty early. My friend said we should help you, but uh, I just wanted to carry on down the road, and I kind of did it because they said to. So, 
Well, I guess uh, we should keep going. <laughs> I, I appreciate your uh, your friend and, and all of you for helping. Uh, please let me um just wait one moment. And he kind of disappears inside his little homestead. Um, anybody near the bear would also notice that the bear, um, now that it's not you know coming right at you and you've got a chance to see it, um, it has a large metal um, uh, like monocle around its back right leg. Monocle. <laughs> Manacle. Oh. Like a, a, a binding, a metal, um, almost like a collar, but around his leg. Monica would have been funny there. It would have been funny. <clears throat> um, yeah. Is it attached to anything, Tom? Um, you can see that it, it looks like it, it has a, a loop on it to be attached to a chain, but currently doesn't have a chain or anything attached to it like that. No. Um, He's a just... dodgy shoony. Well, is, is anybody investigating the... Uh... Yeah, Primrose is looking. Yeah, Primrose, you see very clearly as you kind of um, look in. Uh, one, the manacle uh, looks like it was it's too tight. It looks quite painful for the poor bear. Um, uh, and two, that there is very clearly um, stamped by a metal worker. It looks like it's built into the, the manacle almost during the, the making of the manacle. Uh, are the initials SV with a... Um, a uh, well, a dot in between a, mm. okay. a full stop to signify them as initials. Would there be any famous, like popular blacksmiths or anything that might have those initials? Um, what is your society modifier? Uh, society. Plus one. Plus one. Um, nothing would would leap to mind Primrose. Um, <clears throat> the only real blacksmith that you're familiar with is, is Celia's mother, her family. Mm. Um, you figure that um, as you're getting closer to Sea Spray, there's probably some interesting stuff there, but you're not sure. Yeah. Um, it looks like maybe he was... his bear was a, a trapped or a prisoner of some kind. It's kind of sad. And, like pets the bear. Yeah, as you're saying that out loud, Primrose, the the shuni man Tychus, <clears throat> of reemerges and and says, "What's that you're saying? A, a prisoner?" Yeah, well, he's, he's got this manacle round round his leg here. Look, kind of like holds it up. Yeah, he hops up over the fence. <laughs> And looks down, you can see again he has to like rustle the fur out of his eyes a little bit. He holds the the leg of the bear as as well as he can. He's like, Oh Oh my well This is bad news. Oh what what is it someone's pet or something? <sighs> Not no, not really. We've had some, um... My family and I, we move around. Um, my full name, or our surname, our clan name is the White Furs. You can see see why. Yeah. Um, but, um, we're a nomadic people. We, we move about and try and dodge the ash where we can. But, um, we... We don't like animals, creatures being um, trapped or imprisoned, and so we took it upon ourselves. There's a uh, a, a man, a horrible man, I I think. Uh, a, he has a a company, a business. Um, he thinks himself very clever and very important. Um, he works out a sea spray. Uh, mm. He uh he traps creatures and trades them to the highest bidder and he call himself a I guess a, a legitimate enterprise. His, his name's Sa Sartris no. Valen. He's an he's an orcish man. He doesn't sound very nice. Mm. 
So, um, well, we... <clears throat> he kind of has a little mischievous smile on his face. Sometimes when they're transporting creatures from sea spray up to crucible or out to some place to be displayed or put to fight or something awful, we, uh, we like to pay those caravans a little visit and see if we can um, free some of the creatures. I fear that our um, I fear that they've come to realize that it's us doing it. Oh. Perhaps they released this bear in the with the intent of having it take care of me and my family. Maybe it's time to move on again for you guys then. But that's hey, nice all right, they say you first stones. Yeah. What's that? Seems like someone who makes themselves vulnerable by living on a farmstead shouldn't throw stones at someone else. Even if it is the right thing to do, we should get a nice big fortress and live in that. <laughs> it's a bit of a wake-up call. It perished the thought of my children getting hurt. It was a terrible time before you all came down. Well, You're right. I, I think moving on is the way. Build ourselves a nice little shack here, but... I, I still think you did the right thing anyway, though. If it's any consolation. No, come on out with us to sea spray if you want. Yeah. Could. Uh, does that sound, seem wise? The, this S, that Sartress is in sea spray. If I head towards it, I might be putting my family in more danger. I don't know, man. It's up to you. It's your family. <laughs> Maybe um, we'll um we'll set up a a bit of a camp outside. We'll join you on your on your walk there if that's going. Uh, kids, start uh packing things away, and you see the three white furs kids <clears throat> heading back into the the shack. This, this um. Nice sense motive. Yeah, for sure. What is your perception modifier? Plus six. <clears throat> he seems on the line. He seems like a quite a simple, a simple folk. You can just see he looks clarify. quite sad, staring down at the bear. Just to clarify. Yep. Um, the initials were S B. S B. Okay. You misunderstood. I thought he was. Dang, it was someone else. That's alright. Hmm. Well, this SV person sounds really horrible. Capturing animals and things, you shouldn't be allowed. Well, I happen to mm -hmm. think exactly the same. It seems wrong. Yeah, it's I mean, really wrong. Look at this thing. Is he like hugs on the, the metal manacle a bit? Just based on the laws of sea spray, is it actually legal? Um, what's your society modifier, Strick? Society. No. Okay. No. What's it under? It's just in your skills, society. Yeah, it's just trying to find it. Oh, you are trained. So you got plus five. It is, yeah. Yeah, Squick, I think you would be aware, um, especially with your father's trade, um, animals and all that. Um, one, you'd be aware that in South Hespia, the law is broadly down to whatever the ruling um, barons or baronesses um, decide at the time. Things are quite loose. Um, sea spray in particular um, is notorious for having an absentee baroness. Uh, the Baroness Sultina Ma um, spends almost all of her time in Crucible. She's a, a socialite. Um, mm -hmm. And as such, her um, her kind of militia often take it upon themselves to do kind of police and, and take note of whatever laws they feel like. Um, there's quite a lot of criminal activity. Um, you think 
know, you'd know that there are laws, supposed to be laws, protecting um, animals. Um, that um, particularly with the, the prevalence of the, uh, worship of the Kiad Shore, people look very. Um, <clears throat> people have superstitions about like bringing bad luck with um, being horrible to animals and such. And so a lot is enshrined in law, but you think in sea spray, like it's it's a coin flip whether on any one day you'd get a militiaman who's like, yeah, let's police that. Let, hey, you stop doing that, or would just be like, eh, whatever. So it's technically illegal, but not enforced. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. But yeah, mm -hmm. I guess would would say well. What was, sorry, go what ahead. was the name of the Baroness? Saltina Ma is the ruler of Sea Spray. Her family <clears throat> um, that were very wealthy have made their wealth in um, uh, uh, ship shipbuilders, fishery. I think they began as fishers, fisher people, fisher folk. Um, but they they are a big powerhouse in um, in Sea Spray. The major okay. fishery there is called the Mar Fishery. Hmm. I, yeah. feel, I feel like I really want to do something about it, but also we are on a time limit. I understand. There's often pressing matters. Uh, I like your tree. He oh. points towards the protector tree. Yeah, that, that one should bear some apples at some point. Oh, that's wonderful. Makes me extra sad to be leaving on, but yeah. we'll leave the shack here. It might be that we could come back, and you're all welcome to use it as as you need, um, as long as it's it won't hold up against the next ash fall, of course. But um, mm, that's a shame. It's yeah. what we do. We move around. We build little temporary homes. Just part of our nature. We like to wander. Still must have taken you a little while. Yeah, <clears throat> you got him pretty good at it. Um, part of our, part of our little culture, I guess. Yeah, hmm. learn how to work the wood and and build little buildings. Start off as little lean tos, and then we build them up. Make a little car if we need to. Work hmm. with canvas if we need to. I'm a bear seen to that. Seemed like a nice spot, really, sheltered amongst the hills, but I guess if you anger the wrong people. Yeah, but it, yeah. I guess it's just, uh, Yeah, but you've angered somebody who's really horrible to animals. I think, you, I don't know. You, yeah, it's hard. You shouldn't be the one running away. He'd smile at you, Primrose, to say, I like the way you think, young madam. I, I didn't catch. Uh, any of your names? Um, my full name's Tychus Whitefurs, if I haven't been clear with that so far. Quite... Yeah, no, you've been quite clear. Uh, sorry, I'm Primrose Meadows. Oh, a pleasure. She sort of looks to everyone else. Celia would say her name, but I'm lagging so bad that I can barely... Like, yeah, no worries. I think I'm about... I think I'm about a minute behind you guys in the chat, it feels like. Well, it didn't oh, sound like it, then. Gwilyn uh, would say her name for sure. Yeah, just call me SG. <laughs> SG. All right. SG. I like initials. TJ. It's Tychus Jr., but TJ, what he prefers. Um, my name's Morgan Fate Weaver. Oh, a pleasure. You, uh... He kind of squints a little bit through his shaggy Fringe. It's like, excuse me if I'm being rude, madam, but are you from, uh, from Rain on the Roof? It might be. Well, that's fair. Everyone's entitled to keep whatever they want to their own. Uh, my, my clan, we, um, <clears throat> we wander around, we spread out, and the, your, if they are your people, they've been, um, very kind to us in in uh, difficult times, so thank you for that. 
Well, I'm I'm not sure that either they or I would call them my people anymore, but I I appreciate the thought. All right. Quite a colourful <laughs> bunch, well uh all right, I'll uh, I'll grab some of our stuff. The kids should be just about done. We're always fixing to move pretty quick. If any of you want any more of the produce, help yourselves. Um, or if you see anything inside you want, we're just going to be leaving this place. So it's all simple fare, but we like to whittle and carve the wood. And we got bits and pieces we picked up from around. You all saved our lives, so anything you need, help yourselves. Oh, you can go have a look. <laughs> <laughs> Well, of course, um, with your permission. Hey. Yeah, he beckons you inside. Actually, I'm a driver, so uh, just keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Yeah, great kids. I... Oh, yep, go ahead. Can I ask um, him if, like, there is, like, um, a mother or a mother parent. Yeah, he, he pauses in the doorway as he's coming in, as he's going in. He steps back out for what you see there and just says, Bless you for asking. Um, my um, my partner, Martri, he, um, he died a couple of cycles ago now. Um, she got caught in the ash kind of we're at a bit more risk than your average folk what with staying outside of the settlements um, <clears throat> I'm proud of her she she gave her life to save the little ones <clears throat> it's still a little bit uh, raw for them so I don't like to talk about it much in front of the kids, but um, she was a she was a hero. Pelias just smiles. Yeah, he smiles. Well, um, if you're interested, uh, young sir, as he nods at you, Scrick, we got some bits and pieces. Um, we like to map the areas we travel to as well. You're very welcome to any of those. Sometimes we sell them on at different settlements. But yeah, I'd be like to see a more delicate item. Uh, yeah, he, he'd kind of beckon you in and show you Scrick. There's not too much, but there's some very nicely sort of carved little figurines of different animals, like a little stag. Um, excuse me. Um, various symbols that you you know to represent some of the symbolic animals of of the Kiad shore. Fish, eagles, lots of different things. Um, so a seagull. Did... A seagull. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely would be. Yeah, he wants the seagull statue. Yeah, they would. He would gladly offer it over to you. He'd pick um, it up and be like, I "Think we're done here." <laughs> well, all right. TJ will be pleased. That was one of his uh, first. I'll accept this as the group's award for saving you from the bear. Well, uh, if I'm sure the rest of them won't need anything. <laughs> With that in <laughs> mind, um, take this as well. And he hands you like a circular piece of wood, a pendant with um like a, a paw, like a dog's paw or a shoonie's um, paw imprint on it um, with a little mm -hmm. W carved inside it as well. And he just says, uh, we'll travel with you for now, but any time you run into any of my clan, you show them that and they'll uh, they'll make sure you treat you as one of their own. It's all for Canada, yeah? And he puts it on straight away. <laughs> and you see the rest of the crap he's wearing on his neck. He's like, I'm sure I'll find it in with the bunch. <laughs> <laughs> I like your style. Taking in everything life has to offer. 
Yeah, and he just comes out of the house and he's like, don't worry, everyone. I got a seizure statue and his necklace. <laughs> and he holds him up. <laughs> All right, well, uh, I think we're just about ready to take off. Um, it's <clears throat> we'll sit in the, the little cart here. I'll be pulling it along. Okay. Um, Primo's just gonna gather some fresh soil and little berries to refill her pouches. Mm. Um, yeah, absolutely. And I guess just go. Yeah. Yeah, Dicus turns back to the shack, just like, say goodbye, kids. Each of the kids waves at the house. Just like, bye bye. And he trundles along, pulling this low cart himself. You see they travel very light. Like, they each carry, like, a bedroll, a few strips of, of dried meat and fruits and such. Um, they don't They don't seem to have much in the way of belongings or care much about belongings. Um, and you head back to the road. So... With plenty of the day still to go, you get back um, to the road itself. What's the music so? Oh, it's just too quiet. There we go. Um, <clears throat> you head back onto the road. Um, Squick there, you see uh, the wagon just as you left it, the horses happily munching away at the grass on the verge. You get back into your prescribed places on the horses and on the wagon. And um, you quickly realize, Scrick, that if you want to continue at your normal pace, you'll leave the, the little White Furs family behind. Um, but it's entirely up to you whether that's what you guys want to do or whether you want to slow it down. He would instinctually slow it down so they can be with us. Yeah. So you, you take a bit of a slower, more gentle pace as you're, you're moving along. And you notice that the White Furs family often hop out of their little wagon and take turns walking along. Um, despite his diminutive frame, the father seems very strong um, and very um, tough. He's pulling this wagon, you know, just like your your horses are, um, without complaint and seemingly without flagging at any point. Occasionally, he sort of puffs his his shaggy fringe out of his eyes, whistles a little tune, or talks about things in the environment. You notice he points out copses of trees where he says, "Oh yeah, there's a good pear tree over there." Um, he seems to have good knowledge of, of the local area. Um, but with your slower pace, it takes most of the day to trundle on along another few miles as the day wears on. As you're getting to late afternoon, you all notice this is nothing to do with sensitive noses. Um, you all get a strong um, smell of decay. Um, and death. The horses kind of whinny uncomfortably, um, except for Duch the Duchess, who, who seems completely unperturbed by this. Um, Baroness, rather. And <clears throat> you remember being told by the, the travelling folk of Amlane that um, there is an orchard nearby with a smell of death about it, just outside Sea Spray. Um, and you can see still a good few hundred um, yards down the road on the right-hand side, um, these trees lined in a, a clear planting pattern, an orchard, um, humanoid made, and the smell of death wafts on the wind towards you. Mm. What do you do? From Sorry, from which direction? So it's on the, the right-hand side of the road as you're heading towards Sea Spray, so mm -hmm. a little bit to the north. You see this orchard, row upon row of planted trees. You notice many fruits hanging unpicked in the boughs of the trees, um, and a small um, basic wooden fence about waist height um, on the side, just off the side of the road um, mm -hmm. with an opening does but it, just a bit further down. Does it smell like decaying? vegetation or decaying like flesh? It definitely smells like decaying flesh. Mm. Okay. 
Hmm. How far away does it <clears throat> seem like? Uh, it's only a, a few hundred yards down the road. Another minute or so of trundling along in your wagon, you'll be right in front of the the opening in the fence. I'm a bit confused. It's off the road or it's on the road? It's like right next to the road. So as you're you're about to yeah. start having the orchard trees like right next to you. Okay. Okay. Um, that doesn't smell too good. You think we should have a look? I cannot hear Kieran. Like that voice just lags out every time. <laughs> I don't think so. Like we've got these little doggos with us now. We should keep on going. They could wait. They could wait here though. Um, if uh, just just kind of want to make sure it's okay, you know. I'm sure it's not okay. It smells like decaying flesh. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. You you know what I mean though. In case you know, we can do something about about it. If it's this close to sea spray, I don't see why the god haven't done anything. It's not my job to do it. Well, I guess it sounds like the god are a bit poop anyway. Seeing as they let some V S V guy come and um, harm animals all the, all day. So. I think we should have a look. Does anyone else want to? I agree with you, Primrose. I think we should at least have a look. I don't think it hurts. Look and taste great. Um, dead bodies. There might be some trinkets on them. I was thinking more about the apples in the orchard. That'd be pretty nice. <laughs> I mean, the public service, right? If the guard aren't doing it, then... I don't want to steal from a dead. I'm not a ghoul. Well, I true. steal from the living, not the dead. <laughs> and uh, don't say I said that. <laughs> hmm. I steal from no thing. one. <laughs> well, um, it's a bit grim, but the pl the plants can make use of dead things, but not so much things, if you know what I mean. I don't think it has to look, right? It's mm. not only just on the side of the road. We're not going off course. We can just have a look. If there's anything too threatening, if there's, you know, like ash zombies, like, you know, we saw how bad they were back in Lumen when they attacked. We we don't want to mess. I, yeah, I, I, if you're going to go in there, wanna... you guys haven't killed an ash zombie. I did, so I guess I have to probably go in with you. <laughs> For safety. Well, well, we'd, we'd definitely well we do have um, an expert here. Yeah. Well, I thought, yeah. <laughs> I've killed one before and uh, no one else has, so... I guess I'd better go just to make sure you're all safe if you're going to go. Yeah, we'd be grateful if you did, Squeak. Yeah. I don't want to go, but I'll make sure I'll go because you'll be safe if I do. Yeah, I do feel safe already, to be honest. Yeah, yeah that's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the wagons trundle along a little further. Tychus makes sure his kids are bundled up in, in his little wagon. He says that, yeah, he'll keep a, a distance, keep the kids safe. Um, but you trundle along the next couple of hundred yards, and just peering through the trees, you can see the, you think, the source of the smell. Um, maybe... Uh, like 80 to 100 feet into the orchard, like five or six rows of trees back, um, you see a, a wolf um, pulling, like carrying um, what appears to be the slumped body of a humanoid with its back against um, a tree. Um, from here, it's tough to make out details, but the body looks like it's wearing armor, um, and there's quite a great deal of blood uh, around the body itself. The orchard seems otherwise yeah. peaceful. Um, left to, for the root, to, the, root, the fruit to ripen and, and drop. Many of the, the fruit are now on the ground. Um, but there's uh, just a wolf hugging and growling, pulling at this body. Can I um, 
shout at it, please, and try and scare it off. Just say, hey, get lost. Yeah, absolutely. Make it intimidate. Oh, you're going to have to do it for me, Tom. It's, it's so oh, bad today. No worries at all. <clears throat> Does it look like it's trying to, like, pull the body away or eat it? Uh, it looks like it's trying to pull flesh from the oh, okay. body. Yeah. Ooh, good roll. Pits. Yeah, the wolf looks up at you, shouting, um, drops the like hunk of of flesh it had in its mouth, or like it was trying to rip away from the body, um, and and backs right off. Mm. Celia, but you can see it doesn't right. like sprint away completely. It's kind of like keeping a wary distance and looking at you. Yeah, can I go up and inspect the body? Yeah, absolutely. So as Celia um, heads up towards the body, what, what what's everybody else doing? Um, Primrose is going to come and try and determine how they died, I guess. Yeah. As well. Everyone going. But also keeping an eye on the wolf at the same time. Walt could just be very vigilant with his uh, short bow, seeing as he's the expert at Earth zombies. <laughs> Okay. So as you guys um, get up to the body, the wolf maintains this kind of distance from you. And you can see as you get closer that this is indeed an, an armoured figure. The armour looks quite well made. Um, it has the look of proper plate mail to it, steel plate mail. Um, the figure does have heraldry um, upon themselves. Um, don't think any of you... Actually, this is a really nice point. Willen would pipe up uh, as you get closer and just say, "Oh, that's that's the heraldry of the uh, the Baroness of Crucible. Uh, it must be a knight of the of the Baroness. They're they're a big deal. Maybe we should um, maybe we should take the armor and I mean we're headed to Crucible eventually. I'm sure they'd like to know what happened to one of their knights." That's to make sure, Tom, mm -hmm. is this the kind of fantasy world where a plate plate mail is worth more than like a castle? <laughs> Not worth more than a castle, but certainly worth a lot. Yeah, yeah, because in like in the real 12th century, mm -hmm. it'd be worth more than a castle. So I don't know how it scales. That's awesome. Um, not as extremely as that. Okay, but so it's, it's definitely worth expensive. full plate is worth 30 gold pieces. Which is oh. a lot. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Like your whole village put in to to make sure you guys had money for the road and you had forty gold pieces from the whole village. How much would a lens be worth? Um depends on the commission, but somewhere between five and ten usually. If someone needs a very particular job, it could push twenty. So you this thing is very, very expensive still. Yeah. Full plate mail is very expensive. Like, um, Celia's mum would rarely, if ever, make it because you won't get people coming through Lumen who with, who would have the money and the, the need for full plate mail to be made. Is it like buying a sports car? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Script could be like, wowee! Fresh and all. Yeah. So I wonder what um, killed him, though. Because if he's wearing all this armour, then it can't have been wolves, right? Um, Knight of. Can I see what I know about Knights of Crucible? How, like, <clears throat> strong they are relative to, yeah. like, wolves? Yeah, Celia, you've with your your interest in adventure and heroism, you definitely heard tales of knights of the Baroness um of Crucible. The Baroness of Crucible, um Seria, uh is very well loved um across the whole of South Hespia. She's seen as like a an avatar or a descendant of um Serian Shorestrike, the most beloved transcended mortal here in Hespia. She rules um 
evenly. She um, she's seen as like a paragon of justice. She champions culture. She champions the small folk. Um, she's a capable general and warrior herself. Um, so yeah, uh, the knights of of the Baroness are often uh, sent out to kind of police. Um, other settlements. It's it's almost like a a way for Crucible and the ruler of Crucible to flex their power across the whole of South Hespia, or even off to North Hespia and, and other nations. The knights are are seen to carry sort of the the power and the will of the Baroness. Um, what what was her name again? Sorry, I'm just double checking her surname. It's what, Seria... what was her name? Seria. Seria. Is that S E R R I A? Exactly right, yeah. Which is a, a popular name because of the, the yeah. popularity of Serian <laughs> Strike. Um but yes, uh the the thought of um one of these storied knights being taken down by a wolf or a pack of wolves is like laughable to you, Celia. Yeah, she would comment on that then and just say, "Oh, that yeah, that didn't seem likely." Basically. Hmm. What about if we try and figure out how? You probably just gonna try and do a check of some kind. Yeah, absolutely. Figure out how this guy died. You want to do a medicine check for me? Yeah. I don't think this needs to be secret. It's not like recalling knowledge. Can I help in any fashion if I like Ooh. try and remove it. the? Um, yeah. armor and stuff, and maybe like sort of give her a clearer idea yeah. of where the wounds might be. Roll athletics for me. Can this you can, do it for me? This can give an aid. Yes. Also, a reminder that everyone has one hero point. Nineteen. Uh, Celia was doing that when she's taking the armor off. Script could be like, "I'll take this back to the car." <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to spend your hero point, Primrose? Mm. Mm. Completely um, up to you. You're yeah. going to get a, a plus one from Celia's help. Oh, uh, yeah, go on now. Let's do it. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So it takes some time. You look over the body, Celia begins to, to dress down, uh, experienced from her mother. Your mother would have definitely taught you how to don and doff plate armor, um, Celia. You start taking off uh, the plates. The wolf itself is still prowling nearby and growling, um, but doesn't seem to come any closer. Um, as you inspect the body, uh, Primrose, you notice that the armor has protected the body from the worst of the, the wolf's um, uh, attacks. Uh, it's kind of weird. Um, you notice that there aren't there aren't any obvious like battle uh, fresh like battle wounds or anything. There's no slashes or stabs or horrible bruising or broken bones or anything like that. The body itself looks like it should, you know, this guy should be alive. Um, apart from being dead and in a bit of a state of decay now, it takes you a few minutes, maybe ten minutes. Um, but you eventually find on um, the inside of the guy's um, thigh, you see a puncture. It looks very deliberate. It doesn't look like the kind of thing you'd get from like a, a stab from a dagger or a knife. It looks all... Never 
died. <clears throat> Heads yeah, back to the oh, wagon. Oh, on it. <laughs> yeah, you can add. Um, add. Well, tell it, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> you can add full plate to the wagon. It um, might well be in the compendium. Sorry, right. I put it in. Lag out. Um, I got to. I got to. Uh, there was like a. Um, a puncture wound or something? Yeah, it looks like the guy with how much blood there is on the ground around. It looks like this is what killed the guy and it, it looks like he was drained of his blood, basically. Like he was bled out from this very deliberate puncture into the artery. Um, mm. Rick would look at something else. Mm -hmm. It's unlikely this guy's walked here on, in full play. Yeah. Pretty far. Mm -hmm. He'd be looking for any sort of tricks. Oh, very good. What is he, your... He doesn't think he walked here. What's your survival script? I can look this yeah, up. Yeah, I'd like to help point out, like, look for any, um... Like, just signs of other people as well. I doesn't... Do the knights usually travel alone? That doesn't seem like a thing that would... No, knights can and do travel alone. It depends on the scope of their assignment. Um, okay. Uh, uh, sorry, alone as in no, no other knights with them, but they you're right, they will often travel with like a, a posse um, yeah. as as for whatever they think they need um, so it is unusual to see them completely alone um, yeah, you, you guys look around look for some tracks and you do find um, what looks like uh, nearby a set of um, boot prints that do not match the, the plate mail, a set of drag marks. It looks like this body was dragged here, you think? Um, and as you get to the edge of the orchard, uh, sort of another 100 feet onwards, you would notice on the other side of the fence um, a clear set of hoof prints in the mud. Hmm. Video. It's going to sort of look to Gwillem mm -hmm. and then look to herself and look at the body. And she's going to just say, she's just going to think back to what's happened recently, the fact that she nearly died. Yeah. And she's just going to say, if a knight of Crucible couldn't handle this, then, like, if what you're saying, Primrose, is there's been injected with something or his blood's been sucked out by something like maybe we should just maybe maybe we should just get back on the road yeah we got his play let's go <laughs> yeah i actually kind of agree with scrick we yeah we, we can, looks nervous as well we can and, um but, but yeah my my mother would tell me bedtime stories of the knights. It feels wrong to see one just slumped here on the ground. Yeah, I, I, I want to help people, but we, you know, we can take this armor to Crucible. We can tell them that their knight was here and some kind of stench of death. But we, I don't think. I think that's. I think pushing on further might be stupid. Kind of looks to Primrose. Yeah, I agree. I think Anna be our bead. Oh, sorry. But I, I imagine. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm finished. Thank you. Yeah, um, there's a moment where you kind of share this thought between each other, and there's a sort of that lazy um, summery stillness in the air, punctuated by the horrible smell and the sound of flies buzzing by the body. Now that he's been stripped of his armor, you see this was a, a tall, looks human uh, man, perhaps with some um, mixed heritage from um, perhaps a, one of the sort of... Um, stockier races like the dwarves or 
cooler and stockier, like the Knolls or um, Goliaths. He looks to be a very broad in the chest, tall and strong, um, thick facial hair, um, hair greased back from his brow. Um, so he some... does look like a dwarf, he said. Cut somewhere between a human and a dwarf, um, but he's got the height of the human and kind of the broad musculature of, of dwarven ancestry, perhaps. Is there any identifying papers on him with look at ID? So, slung to the side um, of the figure, um, you do see uh, a leather satchel. Um, but inside, it is empty. It does have okay. the look um, of something that should have contained something. And I w actually, because you guys followed the tracks, I would say on um, on that trek, you would have found an empty scroll case. Yeah, we'll give that to Skrick, obviously, because he's the pack rat. He's the guy. Um, yeah, I, I think we should get out of here. I, I think this is, um, like, if a knight, I think that's a pretty, I don't know, that just seems, that seems real dangerous. Like, a knight of Crucible is dead, and it's something that's sucked the blood out of it, and it's been dragged here. That either means that there's some people here who are strong enough to defeat a knight and then do some kind of horrible fucking post death experiment on it or there's some kind of creature out here that can do this mm -hmm. would would i be able to know if there is any kind of tales of creatures that are known for sucking out the blood of cre other creatures um let's have a little look see it's your nature hmm? you are trained you've definitely read stories um different creatures um Almost too many, really, to your mind. Vampiric creatures that suck blood, um, but none of it match uh, other like predatorial creatures, things that live in the night um, and feast on blood, creatures that live underground and almost operate like trapdoor spiders that lurch forward and drag things below to suck their blood. There are all manner of, of strange, dark creatures that you've read about, Celia, in in Hespia, um, none of them really match what you're seeing here, though. The wound is too clean. It's like this perfect, circular, puncture wound. Like it's been made with a, a syringe, but a very large one. A wide syringe. Um, you kind of go through some of the ideas you have in your mind of different creatures, and none of them really match this. Yeah, so it's either a creature I'm not aware of, or it's somebody who's like a person that's done this. Either way, that seems like a, a bad idea to approach this any further. I think we should just take this armor and take it to Crucible. Mm -hmm. mm. I think so. Okay. Mm. As you kind of resolve this and you can look down sadly at the the body or in front I of you, find a knife. Am I lagging? Am I lagging or is she? I think it's me. <sighs> hmm. Don't crash. Oh, 
like everybody to roll initiative for me, please. Oh wait, what? Roll it for oh. me. Yes. I'll get Wolfos. Wolfos. Seal your initiative. Nice. <clears throat> Initiative. Still. Yeah, I can't do anything. I am trying to do it, I just can't find it. <clears throat> it's like middle right on the character sheet, on the main sheet part of it. Mm hmm. Oh, but it's the, taking um, me eight on my character sheet. Are the shoonies anywhere near us? They are quite near. Would you want to call out to. Get them involved, or no, stay back. Okay, yeah, you you know that they're about sort of a hundred yards away. Yeah, they definitely would have heard the howls. It's... Yeah, so it's only now that many of these creatures seem to stalk from their hiding places where they had been. As the owls call them to hunt. Is that everybody? Oh, I need to do Gwilin. Oh, she's at the bottom anyway. Okay. We begin as... One of the wolves rushes forward to attack. It has a speed of 35. It's going to rush right up to you, Morrigan. Snapping at you. Stride and then a strike with its jaws. Ooh, that would definitely not hit. And... In this hit and run kind of tactic, it then rides back out again. That takes us to Primrose. Mm -mm. Um, uh, Hang on a minute. Thirty feet. Thirty feet. Uh, and thirty feet. Oh, that's no. Uh, okay. <laughs> Can't do anything. Um, I guess I'll cast. Uh, protector tree, probably right smack in the middle over here. Oh, hell yeah. Drag that token out. Yeah. Very cool. Anything else from you, Primrose? Um, um can I recall knowledge? So I can... Yeah, absolutely. It's your nature modifier, please. <clears throat> Nature is seven, I think. Seven. So, two of these creatures just look like standard wolves. Nothing huge um, to pick out there. You know that wolves hunt in packs. And so you think that, um, one, they will try to drag people to the ground with their attacks. Mm -hmm. And two, they prefer to attack together. Um, so you think they're likely to do more damage when they gang up on people. So it's, it would be a good idea to not allow yourselves to get isolated. Mm -hmm. Um but with your knowledge um, and your your sort of love of creatures, Primrose, you can't help but have like a pang of empathy for these mangy-looking creatures that look diseased. Mm. Um, you think if you were you were bitten by them, um, you might be subject to whatever disease has afflicted them too. But they they do look weaker than the other two. 
You've got these two mangy wolves here. Mm. That look weaker, um, but like their their bites might carry disease. Yeah, you should say it out loud. Like, don't get don't get bitten. You can get rabies, and um, don't let them chase you off uh, and then uh, separate you. That's fair. Very cool. The other healthy-ish looking is gonna move. Up to you, Skrick. It's going to snap at your leg. On the 22. For only three piercing damage. But it has a knockdown ability. Just needs to check. Cool. So yeah, um, he'll uh, stride, strike, and then because it is um, draw attack has the knockdown ability, it can spend its last action to knock you prone, Skrick. So you are now prone. That is its full turn, though. You see this one drag Skrick down with its jaws clamped around his leg, <laughs> worrying at him. Thelia, it is your turn. He's going to call out to everyone and so say, get behind her. Mm -hmm. And try and like uh, she wants everyone to sort of get on like this side of her. She is going to move up sort of alongside Skrick. Yep. Don't forget like about here. Tree. Yeah, but I think it's better if other people use. The tree. What does the tree do again? If you're within yep. five feet of it, it can block attacks. Yeah. Yeah. So people people should gather around the tree. To the tree. Um, so one strike. I get to here, can I, can I grab Skrig and throw him behind me? Yeah, I'd say that's a, a single action. Okay, um, I'll do that. And then I'm just going to raise my shield. Very nice. So I've got 21. I don't want to keep changing it, it's really annoying, it keeps updating my AC on the couch. Shield. Yeah, we can just keep it like that. Yeah. Um, very cool. This mangy wolf. Okay. Put a shield symbol on so you make it. Check if it's 35. Yes, 35. So it strides to there. Yeah, it's going to come at Celia because the other wolf's flanking. Or not flanking, but alongside you. So it's going to make a jaws attack. This is its last action. A 14 to hit you, Celia. Misses. Misses. That's its full turn. Morrigan. You're up. More yeah. Um. Hmm. Can I move here, even though there's a bush in the way? Yeah. You can, like, attack around the tree. Cool. <clears throat> I've forgotten what I can do. I'm so cold. Sleepy cold. Sleepy cold. Mm -mm. You got your mind throwing stuff with your mind, but for that you probably didn't want yeah. to move up. Why not? Well, just because you can do it at range, so there's no need to put oh, yourself yeah, like true. in danger. But I think we also said you had a dagger if you wanted to stab it. Stabbing's only one action. Uh, flanking is also a thing in um, Pathfinder. <laughs> uh, the creature's flat-footed to you. Uh, but yes, don't forget the tree as well. Stay within five feet of the tree and it will basically okay. tank damage for you. Sweet. Yeah, See, it will stay behind. Yeah. You want to do mind bullets? Oh, yeah, you did, funny. sorry. Uh, 19, yes. What are you targeting? Is it this one right uh, here or is it the... Yeah, that one. Yeah? Yeah. So you pick up um, a nearby rock and with your mind you just direct it and there's a flare of of light from the the eye tattoos on your cheeks the rock crashes into the creature and with a whimper it just collapses to the ground immediately sweet and killed it bye bye wolfy boy um and anything no. else with your last action yeah you could take cover i was gonna protect revna oh very nice protect companion with revna Mm -hmm. Very cool. Make sure. Put the little magical shield on the left. 
so yeah. Ridiculously. You split your focus with one part of your mind, moving uh, the stone and with the other part, keeping Revna safe. Mm -hmm. The Ooh. other diseased. That's not... Um, it's gonna move. And get the Primrose. Gonna attack Primrose. With only an eight to hit. No, it does not hit you, Primrose. You fend it off. Yeah. And it is gonna back up to here. It Ooh. darts in, snaps at you, you fend it off, and it goes running back out. It's quick. So he's not next to anything at the moment. No, nothing right next to you. You're currently prone next to the protector tree, and Celia is also like standing in front of you between you and the wolf with her shield raised. I'm gonna try and identify the wolf. Mm hmm. Yeah. But he, yeah. Full uh, knowledge. What does he know about the wolf? Um, you critically failed your rebel knowledge check. Oh. Do you okay. have the dubious knowledge feat? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> no. Um, so you're not sure? They just look like scary wolves and one bit your leg and it really hurts. Okay. Mm. Hang on. Yeah, she'd like to spend a hero point. Okay. Uh, no, it's all right. He'll get out his bow as his second yep. action. And then he'll fire his bow as his third action. Very cool. Through Celia's legs. Pew! <laughs> uh, 17. Uh, will absolutely hit. Three piercing damage. Nice. Yeah, a grazing shot, but dr definitely draws blood. The wolf. No, oh, shit! <laughs> Gwilin. Gwilin's in a great position. She's just going to let loose at this wolf. Why haven't I got your character sheet? There we go. God, I still haven't put her stupid bow on the thing. So this is 1d6 damage if it does hit, it's not a knife. Oh, big miss from Gwilin. She will go for a second shot. A 14 does not hit, so she's going to use her last action to take cover, essentially behind Celia. Uh, uh, uh. Which brings us to the top of the round. The circle. Where's my cover? There it is. So the circling wolf's gonna dart in again. Thirty-five feet to you, Morrigan. It's gonna try and snap at you and drag you down. Twenty to hit you. Tree. Yep. Ah, but the tree will take that damage. Mm. So as it snaps forth and you, you can see it about to clamp down on your arm, this branch just creaks down and just takes the, the bite for you. I actually love this spell so much. Oosh. Three takes four damage. No damage to Morrigan. It's a big deal as well. Because no disease or anything like that. Um, And the wolf is once again going to use these hit and run tactics to back off. But it's going to regroup its how. Primrose, your turn. Um, Primrose. <clears throat> um, she gonna open a bag and pull out some, um, some like you know dried, <clears throat> dried uh, leaves, mm -hmm. and like some dried like food type leaves, and put them on the ground and kick them over. That's it. Kick 
them over towards the wolves. Yep. <laughs> it's, Amazing. It's tasty, I promise. <laughs> the wolf over here is going to... Uh, yeah, it's being faced up by Celia. It's going to try and attack Celia. You can drag her down. 12 to hit is definitely not going to be enough. With that, it is going to attempt to move away from you, Celia. Would you like I to use your... Very nice. Yeah. Please do. Maybe I should speed up the map a bit. So that's... Oh my god! Jeez. What's that 20? <laughs> As it moves away, it exposes its underbelly, and you lash out, whoosh, carving a deep furrow through it, and it just yelps, and oh, leaving spatters of blood on the ground. It is going to fucking... Wait, oh. can I, um... There's something I've got, and I don't know if it's worth using. I just want to check... What does Owlbear Claw Talisman do? Um, so that is... Oh, I have it written down. I think it does allow you to add damage to stuff. Owlbear. Well, I might not use it, but I just want to see. Yeah, absolutely. Albert Claw, here it is. Yeah, um, this would be when you chose to use it, if you would, because it's only on a crit. Um, mm -hmm. You gain your weapon's critical specialization effect, which you're using a sword, right? Yeah. Uh, is it a short sword? Long sword. Long sword. sword. So it's in the sword group. So it's critical specialization of effect. Um, doesn't do any more damage here. A sword's crit specialization effect is your target becomes flat-footed to everyone until the start of your next turn. I don't need that here, so I'm not going to use it. Very cool. So yeah, the wolf <laughs> goes sprinting and yelping off. It is now slightly off the map. Celia, it's your turn. Let me move up to here. So if I want to get down to the tree, or if I'll get next to the tree. Mm -hmm. That's one action. I'll demoralize this wolf here if possible. Oh, yeah. Do you have intimidating glare? Oh, I don't think so. Is that a feat? It is a feat, yeah. So because you don't share a language with this wolf, it gives you a minus four to the roll, just so you're aware. Okay. Uh, that's fine. Cool, cool. Uh, yeah, it's a crook, <laughs> Your voice cracks as you go to say yeah. whatever you say. Um, yeah, and your final cool. action? Uh, Ray shield. Very nice. Uh, this one is out of the queue. Morrigan. Morrigano. Yes, that's me. Sorry, I was leaning on the radiator. Oh, um, there's nothing happening now. Well, there's a couple of wolves over here. Oh, there was I one that was there behind the thing. Um, badly wounded by Celia that has run off to the north. That just seems to be in full <laughs> fleeing mode. I'm gonna fling a thing at him. Fling a thing at With him? With my brain. You would have to move five feet. Is that alright? Yeah, fuck it, why not? Oh. So yeah, roll it out. 24, 24 to hit for 9 damage. Very effective, flinging things with your mind. Yeah, this time you take a... You rip a branch from a tree with your mind and just smack it down on top of the wolf's skull. <laughs> a nasty blow. That's so mean. I don't oh. like that. They are attacking you. Fair point, well made. This mangy wolf. Things are getting pretty desperate, but it's gonna try. Mo 
Could Mara gonna have been five feet back, Tom? She needs to get five feet closer to use the telekinetic projectile. I think she moved ten feet up. I oh, know oh. she is within ten feet. You're right yeah. now, I think it's weird. It looked different on my screen. That's all right. Yeah, no, you're right. This one, put off by Primrose's weird herbs and such <laughs> on the ground, is going to go for Celia. A 16 to hit you, Celia. Misses. Misses. Um, and it is going to try and run away again. Yep, to have opportunity. Yeah. You have had your turn. Your this is what I is do. Oh my god. Jeez. Yep. This time, I'm just going to say, like, as it snaps in towards you, you just flip the sword around in your hand and just plunge it down uh, through the neck of the wolf and just bleh, dead. Straight away. Nice. Skrick, you're up. These things are getting absolutely destroyed. Um, where's the other one? There was one that was incredibly badly hurt that ran off to the north. It's probably mm -hmm. about a another 10, 15 feet off the top of the map. But it ran away. It is running away, yeah. Very clearly. Oh. There's one over here that isn't yet running away. To your west. Okay. Hello. You just come over here. Not in much trouble now. You just shoot it and you'll be like, Cherry Dam, little man. <laughs> <laughs> shoot it. Um. The arrow flies out. Oh, that 20 nearly landed there. Uh, 11. It clatters off the tree behind it. Yeah, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> Time to die soon. He's just going to put his short bow away. He's like, Go, Sheila, you do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Gwillen is going to move. Kind of circling around. She's getting quite confident with her shots. She loses the cover. And she's going to loose an arrow. Gwilin, Gwilin, Gwilin. I knew I'd forgotten something. Update her character sheet. Whoa. Oh my god. Much worse than Skrick. This arrow just goes like up through the trees, pierces a fruit, and just goes flying <laughs> off into the distance. <laughs> Whoops. Um, she's With that embarrassment, she's going to move back next to the protector tree. No need to risk anything. Spinal wolf. Things are not looking good. But it is hungry and it is quite odd. Yeah. It's going to try and attack you, Celia. Hey. The last attempt. Misses. Ah, it's going to double down. Misses. Snapping up at you like it's rearing up. Just trying to desperately get there and you're using your shield expertly to deflect it. Primrose. Oh, that boy is, is just hungry. Oh, I feel really bad. <laughs> Attacking us. Yeah, I know. I'm going to do this. Uh, Reflex save. Reflex save. It rolls. A 16. So it fails. Fails. Takes the full damage of 5. So yeah, from your hands, Primrose. Mm. A gout of water. Oh, it comes out of the ground. So it just hits it in the belly. <laughs> Very confused, this wolf. The other wolf is 100% running away. Gone. Celia, your turn. In a blanket with more of him. Yep, yep. And then make it an attack. Flat footed to you. Oh, 
Oh my god, 27. That is a crit, so roll crit damage. Oh, I'm not going to take lower crit damage than the normal damage. So, 12 slash damage. I mean, either way, that would be enough. How do you finish this battle, Celia? You just dance around Dick carefully. I think this battle, she's like made an effort of trying to be a lot more careful. I think mm. even before the fight, she was reckless, and this time she's sticking to her principles, everything the Mother Bear taught her. Yeah. And she does the um, the Wind Waker parry roll. I, um, I fucking thought of that, of that. <laughs> as you started saying, she like dances around. I was like, it's that, it's that, it's 100% that. Yeah. So, so she cool. does the, the skid and the slash. Parry, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you've this fight you've put on a masterclass. Uh, everyone's seen defensive, perfect defense, striking out with the opportunity offense, um, as this creature is expertly killed. And with that, you have defeated the wolves. Mm. Well done, everyone. Ooh. I feel really bad, but. You know, at least at least we're all okay. We've got to watch out for ourselves first. Yeah, you're right. Do Do you need a good berry, Scrick? Here you go. This is good berry, Scrick. Uh, it was one d six plus four. Oh, so different. Um, a goodly berry. Indeed. Uh, yeah, pretty pretty <clears throat> nice. I'll take you back up to full. Whatever happens. Very nice. Yeah, the the tree not even felled. <laughs> nope. It gets to stay there another. Gets to stay there, join its friends in the orchard. Oh, I yeah. I love the flavour of that, that it actually says in the spell that if the tree survives, it just becomes a living tree. Yeah, if, it's, if it's in the right stuff. But yeah. Yes, indeed, yeah. Yeah. So cool. And this comes and gives the tree a pet. Thank you, tree. We, uh, we needed you then. The tree creaks slightly and like leans down affectionately towards you, Primrose. Here you go. Have a little flower. She like plants this little tiny flower next to the tree. Oh, a little do the friend. trees, do the trees just stay there forever? Yeah, they become living oh, trees. That's really cute. I, like I that. love that so much. But yeah, you find yourself stood there, the body nearby. Only a, a minute, less than a minute's passed, and eventually the tree itself, the kind of animated features of it, fade, and it becomes this happy-looking tree, yeah. just stood in the orchard. Well, I guess nice. guess we can can go. Um, yeah, Gwilan gives you like a hearty pat on the back. Celia like rattles your armor slightly. You can see a big grin on her face. It's like, great job, see? You had absolutely smashed that. He smiles and grins, and his, his uh, cheeks go a little, little bit red. And she's like, yeah, you know, you way, you know. Um, just a bit rusty coming out of uh, the village. I feel like I'm back on form now. <laughs> yeah, I never seen what was that like skidding thing? That looked amazing. You never did that with me before. Ah, uh, well, you know, Mother Bear. Yeah. She kept telling me to practice it, and uh, well, never felt confident enough to use it till now. But hey, it's very cool. She gives you a a, a happy. Kiss on the cheek. Yeah, she kisses her back and um, then says, "Yeah, we should we should get the hell out of here, though. Uh, this place reeks of death, and we've we've got this armor. Let's let's get it to Sea Spray. Let's, maybe there's a knight in Sea Spray we can give it to." Yeah, she nods along as you head back to to the wagons. Tychus, you can see four. Shuni faces pop up over the side of the wagon. Mm. Like everything okay? Yeah. Um Celia was amazing as always. Well done, Celia. Also that the shield looks really good. 
when you use that be protected thanks, thanks prim um we found um we found a dead knight of crucible out there <laughs> we um decided it's probably best to just get back on the road maybe tell someone in sea spray no mm -hmm. i don't think we've we've taken enough risks since leaving lumen i think and we maybe get our heads screwed a bit more on family. Oh wow, that's a uh, that's big news. Uh, Knight of Crucible. That's, he was um, um he was looked like he'd been injected with something, like his blood had been tucked out, but it didn't oh. seem like a vampire or anything like that. It was like I don't know. Hmm. Med medical and kind of looks to Primrose. He was the one who sort of did the check. Yeah, I guess so. I'm not really, I'm not really sure what could have done it. Do, do you have any idea of blood sucking creatures? Called the Shumi, who I can't remember the name of. Tychus. Tychus. He kind of scratches his his furry chin. That mm, plenty of blood suckers out here. From the tiny mosquito up to the the vampire bat, and there's mm -hmm. some nasty things in the woods I hear lots of stories about. Um, but nothing that a knight of crucible would struggle with. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought mosquitoes at first as well, but they're tiny. This was quite a large, was it? Can't show wing. It was. It was like mm. if you make a circle with your thumb and forefinger, it was like that size. Ooh, damn. Yep. Yeah, nasty. Yeah, that's massive. That's bigger than I thought you meant it was. Yeah, no, I didn't explain it very well. It's big. It's like a big opening. Mm. But yeah, Tychus kind of grimaces. It's like, well, I don't like the sound of that at all. Uh, be, uh, you want to be careful. Lugging around the the armor, kind of nods towards the plate mail you have disassembled in the back of the wagon. You don't want anybody thinking that you uh, ambushed a knight yourselves. Maybe maybe we should bring the maybe we should bring the body. I know it stunk a bit, but you know probably someone wants this wherever this guy is buried. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah. He's I know gonna... it's a bit grim. Have we got any blankets we can wrap him in? Wrap him in leaves. Will that you've, be enough? You've definitely got blankets back of the wagon. Let Let's get some blankets and like wrap it up like like you would a carpet kind of thing. I can try and make it smell a bit better as well. Yeah, anything to make the smell better would be. Greatly appreciated. Yeah. Yeah. You take your time, and between the wrapping and the Primrose's ability to collect nice smelling herbs and flowers, you think you there's still that kind of sour under under smell nearby the wagon, but um, you think it it should last you a little bit. Tychus tells you that um you're likely to have one more night out on the road, um, but that next morning you should get to the outskirts of Sea Spray without problem. Cool. Alright, bring, yeah. bring in the dead body, let's go. Alright. So, Tychus Find directs you to a, a nice clear spot to rest for the evening. Um, as this, the high fire drops low on the horizon and the beautiful three moons of Arkevia, scene of the great moon and her two sons, Lautry and Filtry, high in the sky, um, you settle down for the night. Um, between your discovery of various interesting leads around the body and your fighting of the wolves, you have now gained enough experience points for you all to level up to level two. Exactly enough. Exactly enough, yes. Oh. You'll be starting a new level afresh, so you can reset your XP to zero, as nice. it's just 800 each time at the moment. But you are now level two, if you want to take oh, this, this eve to, to level yourself up. 
Nice. Oh, and we are using free archetype here as well. So if people have archetypes in mind for their characters, feel free to start okay. plugging them into the character sheets as well. But also feel free to take the time between sessions to do some research and figure stuff out as needed. I think Swordmaster archetype makes a lot of sense after that point. Yeah. The what does? Is it Swordmaster? Oh, it's called now. I think it might have been Swordmaster, yeah. Let's have a little look. I will post the list of archetypes again in chat so everyone can have a look. Swordmaster meditates the strength of our spiritual correction to our blade. He strives to perfect his skills for mastering six deadly trances. There's the following class features. Oh wait, is this a row? Oh wait, no, is it? No. Is it the right thing? Where's the list? List of archetypes. I found Swordmaster. I don't know if this is the archetype or not. Yeah, because we were looking before, weren't we? Oh, here's the list. It seems like it might be a rogue thing. <laughs> yeah, oh, this is a rogue. Really? I think rogue. Is there a rogue subclass Swordmaster? No, no, not a rogue racket for it. The following um, rogue talents complement the sword swordmaster. Oh, I'm reading it wrong, sorry. I've put the list in Discord and in the Roll20 chat if you want to take a look. But yeah, if you want to level yourself up to level 2. Yeah. What do we need to do with that? I can't remember how. So the character sheet uh, on Roll20 does some of it for you. So when you turn yourself over to level 2, it should update your HP automatically. Um, yeah, it has. As well as everything that's trained, so it should update all your numbers straight away, Just really. Numbers. It doesn't really tell us what feats to add or stuff, though. Just yes, know. which would be very useful. So allow me to do a quick rundown. Typically, in fact, I think it's the case for every class. Level 2, you get a class feat. Um, so that's something that you can a look at. A good way to look at it on... Archives and necklace. Um, yeah. So if I click on fighter. Details. Level two fighters get a fighter feat and a skill feat. Okay. How do you see that? Oh, there we go. I found it. Fighter feat and a skill feat. And at the top of the page. Um, it's like the fourth line feet. down says fight feats and it's already organized by level or at least on my screen it is you might have to click on the level thing at the top of the uh, level yeah it is organized by level you're right nice. so, yeah, so I can get level, level two, two feet um, yeah. uh, is it the level two feet strictly better than level one feet or is it just kind of like no not necessarily at all I mean the game is balanced around it um so there might be some powerful stuff that's gated behind higher level things, but most of the time I find that when I've... So I browse feats fairly often because I'm cool like that. Um, most of the time I find that the more powerful stuff is almost like a talent tree. So the most powerful mm. stuff would be like, you need these prerequisite feats to get the later stuff. And that most feats are more about just like complementing your play style or helping you pick things out that you think would suit your character or yeah and you do the things you want to be able to do in combat and things like that yeah mm, what, what's the one that increases spell range what's that called again is it, it is called on? reach spell reach spell that's it yeah it does cost an action though just to increase your hatred. Oh my life, really? <laughs> yeah, but it does Fucking... add. It does add thirty feet. Yeah, but. So you're basically going like turret mode. Ugh. But yeah, no, I I'm totally with you. Um... It's it's definitely a, mm -hmm. a huge shift. I know that people think Order Explorer is a good one for druids. I remember reading a lot of stuff around that. Raggling strike. You aim your weapon to snag a foe's armor, clothing, or flesh to pull them closer. Make a many strike. If you hit a target that's small on you, your creature is flat footed until the end of your current turn, and you can move five feet towards you. Whenever you move the creature, you can move the same 
this now. I don't know, I didn't like that. Yeah. So yeah, have a look, have a think. If you have any questions or if you want recommendations, because these are our first characters, feel free to ask. I kind of want to be like a lead, like I think like I want to be the tanky, like that fight kind of represents how I want to play Celia, where she's like mm -hmm. at the front, she's kind of being the tank, she's like protecting the rest of people. So I want stuff that I can protect other people with. Okay. So feet wise. You can the spells you've learnt, you're stronger when working alongside you, I see it's pretty perfect. Make a strike. Your strike gains a circumstance bonus of damage rolls equal to the number of other different creatures that damage the target since the end of the target's last turn. United Assault seems quite good, but... Yeah. That's really good. Plus four yeah. damage. Potentially. Like if you're all taking down a boss or something. Yeah. A devoted guardian. What's that? You adopt a wide sense ready to defense yourself. And your chosen ward, select one adjacent creature. As long as your shield is raised and the creature remains adjacent to you, the creature gets a plus one bonus to the AC or plus two to the circumstance bonus if your shield raised was a tower shield. I'm definitely going to take that. It is that an action, be... just to keep that in mind. That seems like a pretty good action, though. So it'd be like, oh no, I think it's fantastic. You, you're like giving like um, uh, higher AC to your companions, but it will mean you're like, I mean, it's kind of perfect if you're like in, a, like, if you are the tank. So your turn might be like yeah. strike, raise shield, devoted guardian. That's yeah, that's really good. That seems like a really good. Yeah, I'm definitely taking that. That seems really powerful to me. Awesome. Please be in the thingy. I think I need to put feet. In I game. don't think it is. Because it's a Knights of Last War one, which is absolutely. That, that's a class feat, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, archetypes, you might be interested in Bastion. Bastion's about using your shield. Um, but also, they do a really good uh, version of Marshall, like I wanted to do with Brunk, where it's about like commanding the battlefield and like helping your companions and stuff. Yeah, I do want to have like, good sword stuff as well, though. Oh, for sure. So I don't know who oh, else to pick. Can you put this in my character sheet? I really hate this character sheet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you just put the, the name of it in, I'll fill the rest in. Not a Thank problem. You. Just having a look. There we go. I added the name. Nice. Um, Marshall. Mola. Mine. Pirate. That's the one. Um... Oh, Scrounger. That might be the one Scrick wants to go for. Mm, scrounging. Uh... Sentinel. Yeah, Sentinel sounds cool as well. Um, but Swordmaster seems more like a sort of kung fu kind of person. Swordmaster, learn... you learn a bunch of different trances that are based on like crane and dragon, leopard, monkey, serpent, mm -hmm. tiger trances. Swordmaster, you don't know if that's appropriate. Oh, am I looking? I'm looking at first edition. For fuck's sake. <laughs> Swordmaster Dedication. Your sword's training taught you to never lose hold of your weapon. You gain a plus two circumstance bonus to your reflex DC when foes attempt to disarm you. If you have the deft cooperation feat and critically succeed in a check to aid an ally's attack roll or skill check, you gain a plus two bonus instead of plus one. Um, at level eight, you get other stuff. Oh, you need to be level six to take Swordmaster. There you go. Okay, we'll copy that then. 
get you a cheese one too. <laughs> Ooh, it does actually sound pretty good for Celia. But it can't take it to level 6 anyway. So. Yeah. So, I've only got a limited number of feats, so... Or well, other archetypes that I could take, really, can I? Dedication. Yeah, it... you, they are called dedications, yeah. You could just... You could do a small one now and then take Swordmaster at 6, because you're, you're basically going to get a another free archetype mm -hmm. feat every two levels. You get it every time you get a class feat. Yeah. The best defense is a good solid shield between your enemies. You focus your training. How does that work, Bastion? Bastion. So the to dedication protect... will give you something initially. Okay, I can click on it. There we go. So Bastion dedication. You gain the reactive shield fighter feat, which I think you have already. So I just allow you to switch that out for a different class feat, basically. This fulfills any prerequisite requiring reactive shield as normal. And then at level 4, you can take Disarming Block. You attempt to disarm the creature whose attack you blocked. Pretty cool. The free action when uh, you shield block an attack. You can like try and disarm them from their weapon. Or I can take Pepper Stance Stance. You can, at level 4. Raise your shield with both hands. Yeah. Oh, it's so complicated. It's so much shit to look at. Yeah, it's alright. Steady balance. I feel like that makes sense. For your skill feet. Yep. Very nice. <clears throat> I will, now that you guys have got to level 2 as well, be giving Willen a, a level. Nice. Yeah. She will be an actual person, but she'll be level 1. Very cool, Primrose. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Yeah, like I said, there's no... It's good to have your, your basic stats leveled up now. I just want to do it in... I just don't like doing it in between sessions because I get really confused with what I'm trying to Yeah, of course. Me. I'm very happy to, to help everyone. Holy shit, Celia has 38 health. Yeah. Hmm... Bastion's kind of cool, I don't know if I'm, like, want to commit to being... Mm. I don't know. Being what? I just don't know if I want to commit to being... Super defense super, mode. Super defense. Well, like, I mean, yeah. taking, uh, taking just the, like, the dedication and, like, one feet of Marshall might be interesting to you. Yeah, that one just popped up. I was gonna look at that. Ooh, they sure. have a cool thing where they like buff their allies with them like cooling out in combat and stuff. Find your social skills and courage here before you have You have to be trained in diplomacy or intimidation. Am I trained in either of them, Tom? Can you check? Oh, them? possibly not. <laughs> so I don't think I'm not trained in intimidation. I don't think I'm trained in diplomacy. I would be very surprised if you were trained in diplomacy. Nope, I'm not. So I can't take that one. Okay. What was the other one I was looking at? That seemed quite good for Celia. Sentinel. What does Sentinel do? Sentinel dedication. You don't get much straight away. Shield mask. Oh, the start.
Am I already training heavy armor? I don't remember. Um, let's have a look. Fighter details. Initial proficiencies. Yeah, all armor. Trained in all armor. Well, it doesn't give me much for center on that. Yeah, I saw that too. Yeah, that seems a bit pointless. Is um, Morrigan going to take Enhanced Familiar? If you can. Is Morrigan there? Anya Bobania? She may well have done. We were up at five today. Jesus. Get me back to Ebo. I guess you take the shield by the creation of feet card sets of maybe two other feet. Access carry some old cards. Yeah, that one uh, I wouldn't bother with that. Your elite shield martial training makes you equally at home. You're into familiar with the city. You're a country in society. In urban environments, you can attempt. I don't really like that. It doesn't seem. Oh, none of these seem very senior y. No, I agree. I, I mean, I'd keep in mind that you're probably at level 6 going to go Swordmaster. Yeah. So it's really just like something to to give you a little something at level 2 and level 4. Like, because with Bastion, it normally gives you Reactive Shield. I would just let you just pick another class feat because you already have Reactive Shield, I think. Yeah, yeah I guess. Okay, and then no. at level 4, Disarming Block seems quite cool to me. It's, it's completely up to you. Yeah, I we guess can so. all, I, we can always switch I, things around anyway. Guess I'll just do that then. Yeah. So I so pick, pick another level pick one. Another class feet, yeah. Or level two. I'm happy either way. I'll Grab pick yourself another. another class feet. Okay, so I need to write Bastion in, right? Where? Mm -hmm. What's devoted? Guess the feet I picked. Where does yeah, Bastion you, you go call then? it Bastion Dedication. You can just go in class feats. If you just want to put the title in, I'll write in the rest. Bastion. Dedication. What does that give me again? I don't even remember. So it would give you Reactive Shield, but I think you have that already. I seem to remember seeing it on... Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah so I would just let you just pick another class feat that you want. So anything, okay. anything in level 1 and level 2 fighter feats that you were kind of looking at. So United Assault or Aggressive Block or Power Attack or whatever you like. Let's pick um, I guess all these feats are actions, right? Uh, some of them will be, yeah. Like they are aggressive block is not an action um... what's aggressive block to when you use the shield block reaction you can basically get a free shove um like pushing Pete some like an attacking creature back yeah let's um, just say, say that Fuck it. yeah that seems fine actually pretty good because i realized because it's shove you can either shove them back five feet or make them become flat-footed to all to like everyone until your next turn aggressive pretty block good. taking that and then i have to take one level one run. or level two no so it you, can make you, you picked, um devoted guardian right yeah so that was your class feat for hitting level two yeah. Then with the free archetype thing, you ended up with another one, and you've chosen aggressive block. Yeah. So all you need to do now is choose a skill feat. Skill feat. Okay. Sorry, I stuck it in my head around a lot. Yeah, it's, there is a hell of a lot of getting used to stuff. Skill feats are typically based around what you're trained in. So. Can you help me find? Not that much for skill. The skill feats, Tori. Yeah, of course. Or... Oh wait, no, I found it, don't I? Okay. Kill feet. 
Okay. So yeah, there's stuff for like trained in athletics or trained in crafting. There's armor, assisty. Allows you to get in and out of armor quicker, I think, or help someone else do so. That's a bit boring. Yeah. Skill feats are fairly low level, I found. Although the medicine ones are cool for anyone trading medicine. Uh, but yes, Hannah, I will be encouraging Anya to go down the familiar specialization route because it's super cool. Yeah, obviously, and more use of Revna. Yeah, and witches get like extra stuff on that. Mm. Anything from Scrick? Then you level up. I've done it all. Beautiful. What does Scrick get? He should have a class feat and a skill feat, I would think. Scrick draw, and he took improvised tool, mm. and he went experienced in stealth. Nice, awesome. nice, nice, nice. Oh yeah, rogues get to level up their um training level in skills much quicker than everyone else does. Rude. What about your free archetype, Scrick? Don't know what that is. So just like um in Serrated Empire, we're gonna use the free archetype variant, which means you get an archetype dedication for free anytime okay, you would get a free fee. Yes, but it's a it's an archetype feat. So there is one called Scrounger, which I had my eye on for Scrick. Oh, yeah, I'll take that. That's easy. Yeah. That's so, very fitting. I'll link it to you. I'm going to take skill um, training, because I'd like to get um, training in intimidation, because it feels like I can't do that very successfully. Mm -hmm. demoralizing and that seems like a good thing to do my turn is to demoralize perfect <clears throat> so i'm going to take skill training lovely yeah i'll help on you with hers but with that excellent you are leveled up i'll make sure gwilin stuff is sorted as well for now I'll leave her with her stuff but yeah, as you sit around and you are all regaled around the campfire with tales from Kaikus and his clan, it seems um, his Shuni clan have a proud tradition of being wanderers and observing great things and doing humble but impressive adventures. Um, his family have, have walked um, and explored much of the Bodkin Mountains, which is the major mountain range in South Hespia. He tells you tales of seeing giants on mountain tops and deep caves with creatures whose breath is lightning and all these amazing tales that he tells in his very sort of chilled out um chilled out way. But the night passes and as morning breaks on the eighth of Old Sin, the season of open harvest has begun. And you know that in the town you're heading towards, Sea Spray, um, many ships will be setting. Ooh, that's the wrong map. Many ships will be setting sail um, out towards the great landmass of Verda to begin harvesting the the plentiful foodstuffs there. As you begin to roll in towards Sea Spray. Your two wagons, uh, you notice that Tychus um, begins to head off to the side. Um, in the morning, as you were all preparing, he would have told you that he's not his family, his people aren't keen on kind of developed civilization. They prefer sticking to the open road and um, the wilds where possible as well. And so they tell you that they're, they're not going to join you heading into Sea Spray. Thank you. They thank you deeply for, for your help. Um, and that if wherever you're heading next, if you're heading north, which you guys know that you will be on the other side of Sea Spray, um, that's the direction they're heading to. So you may run into each other again. 
Okay. Yeah, say goodbye. Yeah. I give you a hearty goodbye and take us with his little hand pulled wagon with his three kids bundled in the back. Takes off skirting round Sea Spray. Now, Sea Spray itself is an interesting uh, settlement. It's kind of exploded um, in popularity from its initial conception. Um, it's only about half as old as Lumen Village itself. It's a much younger settlement uh, to Lumen, but way bigger. Um, it has, in fact, this is going to be much easier if I just move us over to the Sea Spray map. So hopefully you can see it fine now. So, Sea Spray um, is a popular tourist destination for the the wealthy and the well-to-do coming down from crucible um going on tours of the hunter's coast this will be their final stop very few of them would make the effort of going on to lumen lumen is seen as kind of this rural backwater in a way that to the high and mighty crucible its only use is producing these um specialist lenses but sea sprays a different uh, matter lovely beaches um fresh seafood um an area called the golden isle which you can see the the number seven label here in the center is a, a place where the baroness saltina mar and her other upper class uh, folk will host guests from crucible and much um much a, a big deal is made of um putting on great events for them the pool attached to the Golden Isle is um, constantly kept topped up with perfumed flower petals and minerals so that the High and Mighty can bathe in its waters and it's said to, to keep you young and keep your skin um, young and healthy. Um, outside of there, the original beginnings of Sea Spray the Settlement um, is the only place where you have standing and maintained stone walls, defenses that could be used in in the event of an attack. Um, but Sea Spray itself has grown too quickly um, and too broadly to realistically have um, established defenses. And so you see there's just this like dirt path that rings the settlement with watchtowers in place um, for when the Ashfall comes for any... Um, ash corrupted to be uh, seen from there are residential areas agricultural areas as well there's a thriving market sea spray is well known for its kind of shops and market stalls and on the other side um is what's called the lane of wonders where you have um many uh, fantastical and interesting um bigger shops and established premises often sponsored by the um, their kind of mother shops back in Crucible. Um, the thriving docks and the fishery section is in the, the northwest here, Saltcrest's bounty. And the the common folk of Sea Spray use the pool here, um, the shipwreck pool, uh, to kind of bathe um, and uh, enjoy themselves on a, at the end of a, a hot day's work. Um, to the south... Other areas of, of uh, importance, you have the Dark Moon Woods, an area now largely abandoned and left to be overgrown. It contains some old pre-Exodus ruins, um, but also some of the wealthy have paid for mausoleums for their family to be constructed there um, to be buried. You guys would know that burial uh, traditions in Hespia are quite varied. It depends on people's beliefs around the Kiad shore, but a common one is um, for um, cremation to happen um, at night under the light of Sina to help the spirits travel to the dark side um, of Sina where many believe the, the afterlife is for, for those in uh, Arkivia. Um, but yeah, few people go to the Dark Moon Woods. Some people say it's haunted. There are caves, old ruins, but it's off, usually left alone. Um, and then off to the west, this strange looking lane is um, the Spirit's Trail, where many different shrines and stools put out for different 
Kiad Shaw um, festoon this cliffside walk. Um, any kind of beliefs uh, are catered to here. And at the base of the walk is a large temple within which many of the transcended mortals of Hespia are worshipped. Um, and you have next to it, um, not so much used for recreation, but seen as a as site of kind of, again, religious significance, this pool, this naturally formed tidal pool of nature's grasp um, lies there. Ships come to and from Sea Spray frequently, and the whole thing lies in this kind of sloping valley down to the coast. So as you have all trundled along the road from Lumen, you've come over the crest of a hill and have seen this kind of sprawling settlement laid out in front of you. But as you approach, you come in towards um, this section here, which is number 15 on the label. Annoyingly, I got I misted the label, so I put my little five next to it now. Um, which contains an old theatre that is still in use to this day, the old Pebble Theatre, and a number of stools surrounding it. But as you pull up in your wagon, you would notice that you are the only folk approaching Sea Spray from this side. Um, from your vantage point up on the hill, you would have seen a number of different caravans and wagons going to and from Sea Spray from the north, the trail leading up the Hunter's Coast towards Crucible, um, and so on. But yeah, welcome to Sea Spray. So we need to do... So we go. For many of you, it's, it's probably quite overwhelming. Um... You know, this is a significant trip, as you found many days um, on horseback, and um, few of you are likely to have visited Sea Spray before. Those in Lumen often keep to themselves and are content with having visitors come from afar as the kind of source of excitement in the village. So this is probably quite scary, exciting, eye-opening. Um, you'll have heard many stories of Sea Spray. It is a uh, the neighbor, the closest settlement to Lumen, and it is as different to Lumen as you can get for being in the same kind of area of the the country. Mm, okay. So we we've got two objectives here, right? We need to ask around and see if anyone saw the light bearers pass through here, and find out any information about what they did whilst they were here mm -hmm. we've got to find someone who would be a good person to give this body to and report the death etc mm -hmm. just want to look through the notes quickly yeah um, of course but for some reason the laptop's been a bit now and then you just have a note and then we got bonus Go and kill this animal, Buza guy. Yeah. Sartres Valen. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Through the notes. <clears throat> It's a few days from open harvest, right? Saying in the notes here. You this today is the first day of open harvest, so you it know Sea Spray will be very busy with um big yeah. harvest ships leaving um the port full of many of the the popu well, not many of the population, but many workers here will be those who go it's Burda and the harvest that happens there is incredibly important to the stocks of food. Um, in South Hespia mm -hmm. and other nations across Archivia. Those who go there, there is a big element of danger to it. So it's not your standard kind of fisher, folk, or... I mean, fishing is already a dangerous thing, but yeah, it's not like farmers heading off, you know. There will be people saying weepy goodbyes to to parents or to, to loved ones who are heading off on the harvest ships because maybe not all of them will return. Um... There are dangerous creatures on the, the Isle of Verda, uh, and there's also, it's it's kind of a, a well-known thing that there's rivalry between nations on Verda, and it's definitely not unheard of for people to be attacked or killed if they've, if another 
um, harvest party has decided they want what the other one has. Hmm. Okay. Well, I think first first comes to the thing we should find a uh, we should find someone about this body because we can't carry around a dead body. So no. we should probably look out for local guards or is it like a guard place we're going to? Yeah, could we ask around and see if there's any um where to report this to if we ask someone on the street like a, like a is there any visible guards on the street we could yeah down? certainly um no visible guards currently but you you can sort of see some off in the distance ahead some people standing around um in there the the baroness's the ma heraldry um which is a, a blue um it's like a, a split field top and bottom and it's a light blue on the top and a, a like a scarlet red on the bottom um but before that as you're kind of discussing this amongst yourselves and setting your sights um ahead there's a commotion around you as you've come into sea spray the beginnings of the town are um marked by this area of like stalls and marketplaces um and there's this kind of hubbub of activity and as your wagon is is heading up um, with the horses pulling it towards uh, the guards ahead, a voice calls out to you. Ooh. A deep voice um, from just ahead of you as a large knoll steps out from behind a stool and just says, That's as far as you'll be going for now. This broad... Oh humanoid in patty leather armor holds up a large scarred hand um, in front of you and blocks the path oh. and you notice as he does this that a couple of other people who previously had just looked like people interested in the stools and wares around have made themselves very clear standing to either side of your wagon as it's headed up this kind of thoroughfare through the stools here. When you say either side, they're kind of like coming to inspect our stuff or whatnot. It, it looks like they're flanking you. These people look like rough folk and they you can see they wear weapons um, on their belts. This does not look like a guard oh, situation. No, this looks like a um, bunch of dogs shaking us down. Well, as, as you're forming your impression, the, the large null figure continues and says, as he kind of, you, especially you would notice Celia feeling protective, I imagine you notice him set eyes on Gwilin. And he's just like, we'll be taking the young Miss Oakley from here. Thank you very much. And no one has to be hurt. Yeah, that, that ain't happening. I'm going to just sock him in the face. <laughs> okay. <laughs> With that, then, nice. let's get down to brass tacks. So, I've chucked you guys on the map, but again, feel free to update and move about your tokens where you think you would be. You got the wagon represented here in the middle. I'd be right up next to him. Yep. There's the no. There's two guys that have moved to flank you. Well, my shield should be up to 22 now, right? Rather than 21. Yes. Yeah. That was good. Change that. Oh, it is 22. Oh, I just have not updated on my token. Yeah, yeah, weird. It's fine. Cool. Oh, right. If you'd like to roll initiative for me, please. Wait, why didn't it change? Mine didn't change even. Refreshing. Yeah, it won't let me change it. Uh, it works when you refresh. I'll oh, refresh the page, okay. Uh, yeah, I want it at the same time, sorry. No, no worries at all. I'm noticing that Skrick's token hasn't updated either. Skrick should have Maybe a 20 from. No, it's not attached to his stuff. Hit points. Ooh. Oh, there we go. Mine's changed now. Hannah was right. It's just needed to refresh the page. Oh my 
Well, I think you, yeah, you'll have to restart the music for me to on, because it's... That's no worries at all. Good old roll 20. Rolly 20. They really need to put an option where the players can control the jukebox. Like, the GM could be able to assign certain players. Oh, the dream. The absolute dream. Really would be a dream. Uh, I decided to roll an initiative. Yes, please. Initiative. We've had a long list, right? Yes, absolutely. You're all prepped. You can have whatever your spells would have been and so on. Might hear a point this. Uh, bad as that. Yeah, I, I'm actually going to hear a point that. Okay. How many do I have? I can't remember. I just have one, don't I? Everyone's rolling ants initiative. Um, yeah. I definitely yeah. would have given you one this session anyway, so. He's fine. Uh... I just couldn't remember if I used him. Yeah, no worries. Oh, that's much better. Yeah, I'll take a 21. That seems pretty good. I want to get the first. be reserved and safe, but if you threaten Gwilin, then I'm going to fucking... Yep. <laughs> Where is... Oh, well, that's fine. Uh... Right, I'll do... Morgans. Let's see some more of those initiative people. Where is the Skrik initiative? Huh? Squeak initiative. Yeah. Mr. Quillens. Hearing Paul on asleep as well. Oh, maybe. Well, I'm rolled well. Primrose. <clears throat> Guy. Where has it gone? Oh, I think Karen's back. Karen. I tried rolling it, but it's and his laptop's too slow. No worries. There we go. I found the stat block. Cool, cool, cool. Good time. Okay. Turning off those background apps has seemed to fix this laptop a lot, Hannah. No, it just it gets better if you leave it for a while as well. When I turned them off, though, it seemed just like massively changed. Mm, fair enough. Is there any feats that make you like good at initiative, Tom? Yes. I think I it's a general like... feat. It's called Incredible Initiative. Oh, I get one of those at um, third level, so I think I'll probably take that. Very nice. Because I like being able to go first to Celia. Yeah. Right. And do we have... Do you want me to roll it for you, Skrikel? Yeah, and this is being really slow. No worries at all. We get like five initiatives coming. Initiative! Nice, not bad. Cool. Right, at the top we have Gwillen Oakley. <laughs> okay. She, Celia would tell her to get behind her if she can. Oh, yeah. She would do that straight away then. Right. An action to pull out her bow because she wasn't like ready for a fight or anything, and 
She'll try and shoot over your shoulder at the guy. Do I still take an action to get out as I kind of initiated the combat? Or? Uh, I think, yeah, because you initiated it, you're, you're fine, Celia. Okay. Uh, oh. That's a bow shot. Nice. Took a few different hits. Nasty hit straight away. Pew pew. Oh. Alright, Morrigan. Do you believe poor Anya has fallen slumber? And so we shall hit things with mind bullets. Because that works quite well. Sorry, I'm kind of in and out. I apologise. Sort of... That's alright, love. I'm impressed you made it this far. I'm sleepy. Um... Sleep. <laughs> Would you like to do a spell? Yeah. Well, I'm not, like... I have nothing against doing the, the mind bullets. You know what you're doing. Yeah? You want to do mind bullets? Yeah. Mind bullets. <clears throat> Who do you want to do mind bullets at? Mm hmm. Littler, grubby looking guys, or the big knoll guy at the front? Little, please. Little. Oh, he missed. Anyway, you'd like to move. Mm. Probably. Right, would you like to gather up with Celia? Oh, you rolled it yourself. Yeah. Well, don't, oh, uh, 23 wait, hits. You're not supposed to do that. No, no, that's okay. I should have thought. Yeah, so you pick up like a something from a nearby stool, like a little bottle, and it just flies across and smashes against um, mm -hmm. the head of this grubby-looking human woman here. And she swears at you. Is there any way you would like to go? Would you like to move towards Celia in the group, or are you happy where you are? Mm -hmm. Or you could take cover in the wagon. She's gone, I guess. <laughs> yeah, Professor. Huh? Gonna, Sorry? Gonna... Would you like to take cover in the wagon? <clears throat> yes, please. Yeah. You can so get people... to bed if you want, on yeah. Yeah, please no, do, my love. No, it's already right, done. Sorry. This is combat. Yeah, we're nearly finished. Uh, Celia! Big knoll in front of you, now with an arrow sticking out of him. Yeah, I'll make an attack against him. Very cool. Sword. I don't want to do it non-lethally. Okay. Don't know what that does mechanically. Uh, I think you get a minus two to the hit roll. So 19. Unless the weapon has the non-lethal property. Uh, 19 would hit, yes. 10 damage. Hot damn. Very nice. So yeah, you strike this guy a resounding clunk of a blow. I'm gonna knock him out. Two more actions. Um, I'll raise a shield, second action. Yep. And then third action, I will devoted guardian and pick Willem as my chosen ward. So it raises her... Um, AC by one. AC by one. And I will also shout out um, at the knoll just and the rest of the thing saying um, to just say something along the lines of um, oh, I can't think what to say roleplay wise but she, she takes that, she'd be shout, basically just shouting out sort of saying are you sure you all want to end up like um, your boss kind of referring to the knoll just <laughs> looking how he's already looking sort of I imagine I assume he's bloodied, like... He is basically. bloodied, yeah. So yeah, so he's just saying that, basically, to the rest of them. Yeah. Uh, you shout that out, and you can see them, like, glancing at each other. And there's people nearby who are kind of gasping and pointing. Um, and as you do that, he kind of spits a, a load of blood and phlegm on the floor. And he's just like, you'll regret doing that. <laughs> uh, Skrik, your turn. So, what's actually happened? So you pulled up. Yeah, this guy, he like blocked the road and was like, okay. hand over Gwilyn Oakleaf, she's coming with us. Okay. And then Celia was like, nope. 
punched him in the face. Combat began. Strix gonna recall knowledge to see if he knows anything about the clothes or anything like that. Okay. Your society modifier, good sir. I don't know. And the character sheet won't load on that. No worries at all. I can look for you. You are trained, so it is a six. Yeah, you... Squick, you... I think probably you had a, a conversation with your dad at some point about people like cattle rustlers or like horse rustlers, people trying to steal what isn't theirs. You know that there is crime. You know that sea spray is particularly because of its touristy nature and the the absent baroness, the militia, it's kind of rife with low-level crime. Um, these people have all the hallmarks of like a roughly cobbled together uh, band of ruffians and opportunists. Um, I'd even go so far as to say you've heard of these guys. The, the knoll you notice has um, he has like crystals of salt like near his mouth and like in the tangles of his fur um and the there's like probably one roughly poorly drawn or carved in his leather symbol of like a jaw crunching rocks um and you know these guys to be a very low level criminal element in sea spray called the salt crunchers um and this is their, you think, is their erstwhile leader, Sorky Salt Crunch. Okay. These guys are chumps. Why? They know who Gwilin is, right? So They they called Gwilin out by name. Yeah. They seem to only have interest in grabbing her. Frick would, uh, so he would have done it against the null. So the null's flat footed to Scrick. Very good. He's gonna he's gonna back off mm -hmm. to here. <clears throat> he's like Why do you wanna? We can make a deal. <laughs> <laughs> Would they okay. say anything? Oh yeah, he'd he'd reply a hundred percent. He'd kinda like talk through Celia slash at Celia or just be like you should listen to your little friend. He's got the right idea. Let's make a deal, little man. How much do you want <laughs> to fuck off? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a reputation to protect. How much do you want for the girl? <laughs> he goes to reach into his pocket. He's like, I guess I want nothing you're giving me. And then he pulls out his short bow and with his quick draw, he's going to fire, draw and fire in the same turn. Oh, that's sick. <laughs> quick draw. <laughs> Can you roll it for me? Cause the yes. Things... That's badass. And yeah, he has flat footed to you. Short bow, short bow, short bow. Uh, oh, 23 shit. to hit. Nice. Def definitely hits. Uh, even with, yeah, not quite a crit. But AC. And roll the damage. I have clicked the button. There it is. <laughs> One piercing damage. But because he's flat footed to you. You get sneak that, attack. Get sneak attack, which is an extra d6. Turn off my GM rolling. <laughs> so, it's a good shot. Hits him right, like, side of the chest, almost in the armpit. And this little arrow is just stuck out. And you see him sneer and uh, growl over at you and your little witty retort. <laughs> And you see him call out to one of his friends, and he's just like, Get him, Ruddy! 
and you see this little halfling man pull out a little knife. It's like, yeah, you're gonna die. <laughs> As he moves towards you. That's my backup character. <laughs> He's got 25 feet, and he is going to... Ruddy. <laughs> His full title's Ruddy the Ripper. Um, nice. He's gonna throw... His... And he's not gonna throw his knife, his knife's too precious. Throw a rock at you. Plus five to this. A 19 to hit, baby! Three damage. Take that. I'll do it for you. Ooh. Um. So that is move. And then he threw his rock. <laughs> and he's going to circle around you. Behind this rough looking woman here. Primrose. Um, Primrose is gonna uh, gonna uh, which which one's the this guy's just a guy, isn't he? Yes, yes. I, I'll start moving them back because they would have definitely backed off. Um, okay, Primrose. Her ears have been back uh, in an encounter, sort of nervous, but perks up when she sees Celia attack. She straightens her bow and tightens it. Okay, Aww. I'm coming in. <laughs> she casts um, Sprout, and from like these tomatoes or whatever they are here, <laughs> some like tomatoey water just spurts at the, the um, knoll. Get chucked, get get chucked. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bad day. The Sorky Silk Crunch. <laughs> reflex save. Yes, reflex save. Why is it always five damage? Every single time? Yeah, is, is it, it has actually been. rolling properly? <laughs> Roll it again, I'm curious. He it... does make it, but it's not a crit, so it is half damage. The fuck? It is rolling. Do it one more time. Okay. Fucking hell. Okay, no. It, it was just, you were just rolling creepy bad luck. Um, he still does take damage though, he takes half damage. So that's fine. But yeah, but I think the important part is the emotional damage you've just caused by <laughs> ketchuping him over the back of the head. Yeah. And you hear some of the crowd laughing and pointing. And he's just like, Sorky Salt Crunch won't take this! <laughs> um, anything else from you, Privilege? <laughs> no, no. Alright. He is gonna bring down the pain. Uh, He's gonna use his snagging strike ability on Celia. Basically oh. fails his attack. <laughs> <laughs> he swings his club wildly, Celia. You're like prepared to fight all the training with Mother Bear, and then this idiot's just like <clears throat> swinging wildly with his club. Not even worth your time. Um, he is going to <laughs> make a second swing. That was so Easily carry it away. Uh, How do I use aggressive block? Oh yeah, um, you would. Um, it's it's when they hit, so he hasn't hit you yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's just like flailing. Um, oh, he's much too proud to run away though. Um, it says as you block the attack though. Um, I thought it was when you used the shield block reaction. Oh, I might maybe. Be wrong. I may be wrong. Aggressive block. Let's you either shove them or make them flat put in something. Yeah. 
case it's such a bad spot. He's going to try and intimidate you, Celia. Just think, you can't block all everything! Oh yeah, you used the shield block reaction. Ah! 22. Uh, that beats my... <laughs> Your will, will. save. <laughs> you are frightened one! I know. It's not rain cloud. <laughs> Ignore that, I'm just trying to add spells. Oh, it's the target wherever it goes! Oh my god. Amazing. Right. That's his whole turn. Now for Mave Midder. Mave Midder. Did get smacked in the face with a bottle. Yeah, she's going to go for Skrick as well. She's going to stride. She's going to try and shiv Skrick. Plus five to this. A 15 to hit Skrick fails. <laughs> she's going to fucking run into the stalls. She runs up to you, Skrick. She's like, yeah! She stabs, she thinks she's got you, and then you kind of like move your arm up, and she's just stabbed between your arm and your body. She's like, ah, shit! And just runs off into the stools. Um, Willen! Very smugly. Would you say anything about the whole like non lethal stuff, Celia? Because Gw Gwillen's ready to shoot this guy. Not really. Like, I think she just didn't want to get arrested for murder, potentially, but... <laughs> oh, Gwilla misses! The also, shot. they're attacking us. They threatened us first. Uh, Morrigan. She's going to help Skrick out. She's going to do telekinetic at... <laughs> Ruddy. Uh... 14 hits. Another piece of nearby detritus has picked up. A small fruit crate has just crashed over Ruddy's head. He's covered in potatoes. Um, Celia, your turn. Um, yeah, let's just fucking whack this guy, shall we? Right, because I'm nervous now. I'm just going to make a regular attack. It's yep. going to make sense roleplay wise. Oh my god. 24 definitely hits. Six, Six. damage. <laughs> kind of knocks the wind out of him. You can see he's looking really rough now. Um, I'm going to try and demoralize him. I'm going to say, You last chance to run away! Teen. Okay. Because of the situation, I'm going to have a look at his will save. Okay. He's like bent, half bent over because he is taller than you normally. His big knoll form, but he's half bent over so his face is near yours. And you see the, the crystals of salt and the, the red blood dripping out of his mouth. He's just like, go fuck yourself. I'll do a second attack. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 22, I think, with the yeah. fire. And you know the state of him. Celia, this is a killing blow. How do you finish him off? We'll just get him. Just as he says, go fuck yourself, or just raise my shield up and just, like, slam him up into the head with an uppercut and then just, like, swing round and like move my sword under my kind of armpit and slice him, just like cut him straight behind me. <laughs> yeah, Gwilin kind of like half cheers and gasps at the, the display of swordsmanship as he falls to the ground. Very do I lose my frightened? You do lose your frightened, yeah, at the end of your turn. Strick, you can see both uh, Maeve and Ruddy 
are looking like they're going to fucking run away. Do you want to leave them or do you want to cut them down? No, shit. <laughs> um, going to go fucking hide. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Seen Celia murder a man. Yeah. Um, it's going to run over into the market and try and hide in a bucket. <laughs> yeah, um, oh, yeah. Uh, he should have experienced, but I haven't changed it yet. Oh, lovely! It'll bring me satisfaction doing that for you. Expert stealth. Sixteen. Very nice. Yeah. You leap into a bucket using your momentum to kind of overturn it, and the only sign of you being there is your little, a little ed, end of your tail peeking out from underneath the bucket, Scrick. Yes. <laughs> As it rattles side to side. Yeah, Ruddy's like, oh, fuck this! Goes running off, pushing people out of the way. Get out of my way! <laughs> Primrose, anything from you? Um... No, she just relaxes slightly, um, and it's like, so yeah, maybe we should get out of this area, maybe? It's not usually good to kill people in the open space. They were threatening us. Yeah, I know. But, well, yeah. I mean, you're right, maybe, maybe everyone will believe us. You know, there was witnesses. You all saw it. She looks around to the people probably hiding behind uh, these things. <laughs> so, as Maeve and Ruddy disappear into the crowds, <clears throat> the battle is over. Um, many people turn back to their stools. Some look a little bit scared. Some cast disapproving glances. Um, but you absolutely would notice that others are like nodding their head. There's like a scattering of individual kind of cl half claps and applause. And you hear someone being like, yeah, go away, you deserved. Um, one of the, the stool keepers, uh, a middle-aged uh, human man kind of comes up with his arms crossed and looking down at uh, the knoll dead on the floor. And it's just like, Thanks for doing what none of us have been able to do. He's a menace, or he was. Do you think... They won't bother you any longer. Do you think the other ones would be a problem still for you, maybe? <laughs> I doubt it. After seeing what you did to Sorky, the other ones will just run off. They might join other gangs, they might... You might never see them ever again, but I don't think you need to worry. Okay, kid. He like nods over towards the distant guards, um, and you see a couple of them heading in your direction. Mm, yeah. He says, um, "I'll bear witness to this. He came at you, um, but you better make sure your story straight. Whatever's going on with with him being after one of you." True. Sorry about your tomatoes, by the way. But I can, I can give you a new one. <laughs> That's all right. They're the cleanest I've ever seen them. <laughs> um, yeah. D did you know them, Gwilin? Gwilin, you can see, is a, a little bit um, uh, shocked. The adrenaline running through her system. She's quite mm. wide-eyed, still breathing fast. She's like, oh, no, never mm. seen them before. Why don't we? She like nods at the Sorky on the floor. Why don't we check see if he's before the militia get here? Oh, you're right. Maybe, maybe he's got some weird bounty thing. People have those, right? Good idea. Yeah, this can we check his pockets for any kind of bounty? Yeah, you you pass over the the form of Sorky Salt Cruncher. The late Sorky Salt Cruncher, the legend. Um, he has, if you wanted to take any of his weapons or armor, he has leather armor and a club and a sling. No. <laughs> um, and 
Uh, you find about his person some dried meat. There's like a pouch of salt, like salt crystals. Um, you can see. Not that you steal anything. Yeah, um, but you do find um, Raggedy. It looks like he was. Um, it looks like he even attempted to burn it at one point, but then thought better of it. There's like a singed corner of it. You see, see a small piece of parchment that's been folded many times. Um, and as you open it up, you see a, a hastily scrawled um, advertisement. It's not addressed to Sorky in particular or the salt crunches. It just says it is essentially a bounty to anyone who can bring my daughter home. I shall give the sum of 20 gold pieces. Oh, she must it. not be harmed. We weren't very happy about you leaving, Gwilin. Lord Forswain Oakleaf. He yeah. is like fuming. Yeah. The militia turn up on the scene. You can see they 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 look barely better armed than the the kind of gang gangers themselves. Um, a short sword. One of them carries a, a, just a spear. No shield. They wear the simple tabard of that blue and red of the 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 ma colours. But they sound official as they turn up. One of them calls out, "In the name of the Baroness, what is happening here?" Yeah, you know, Celia would explain the situation. Say that he came up and threatening us, and then shows this shows okay. the bounty. Yeah, as you show the bounty. The, the militia woman nods. She's like, ah, yeah, this is not unknown. Um, does this bounty, because there's no like picture or anything, does this bounty concern one of your number? She'd nod, but she's not going to point out here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the militia actually don't press. Um, and she just says, just be aware. A message like this will likely have gotten out to many of the the criminal elements in Sea Spray, and she like <laughs> nudges the shoulder of Sorky Salt Cruncher's body on the floor. Um, be advised that Sorky was towards the bottom of the pile. If someone more capable has their eye on twenty gold pieces, you could be in for a greater degree of trouble. Oh, is there any way to get rid of bounties? Well, this is nothing official, so it doesn't go through any actual mechanisms. My recommendation would be that you speak to this Lord Forswain Oakleaf directly. Sprick in the barrel would be like, yeah, 20 gold pieces, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> From the bucket, you hear that. <laughs> Can you offer any kind of protection? You can see there's like a flicker of emotion across her face. It looks like shame. Um, from the standing of this woman, you, you can imagine like someone who probably actually t would like to take pride in their city and protect it and such. But she clears her throat. Um, her partner looks completely disinterested. He's like chewing a, a piece of jerky. She just says, I wish I could give you better news but you would be welcome to to spend your time here in sea spray uh, in and around the the central um plaza the the guard bit the militia building is there um she kind of points and you see these watchtowers constructed around the edge if you can keep yourself in sight line of a watchtower there's a a decent chance but I'm sorry, I don't want to give you a full sense of security. What you about could hire, hire a, You could hire a bodyguard. Um, best place for that would be to go to the... Um, where is it? Go to the... Uh, the Salty Knuckle Inn. Um... That's just across um, from the, the militia house in the central plaza. There'll be plenty of ruffians there you could hire. 
Um, they'll be as as good as the coin you give them. Mm. We okay. ourselves aren't for hire, I'm afraid. We work at the on the the whim of the, the Baroness Saltina Ma of Sea Spray. Primrose nudges senior. Should we say about the other thing? Yeah, I wanna tell him about the body. Uh, okay. Gone half ten, maybe leave that for next time. Yes. About the plate, Greg would get out of the barrel and be like, Yeah, we found a plate. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, with that in mind, <laughs> with having just told them, and you see a, a, an in, quite an intense look come from the militia woman, and the, the chewing, jerky guy stops chewing um, and looks over as you mention the, the body of a knight of Crucible, a, bar- a knight of the Baroness Crucible. Um, we will stop our session for tonight. Nice. Nice for dogs. Thank you, Tom. I'm going to go because it's quite late. And yes, me, absolutely. So. Get yourselves to bed. I'm going to do the same. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you very Bye, much. Everyone. Bye. Thank you all. Have a lovely mm-hmm. night.